The Nintendo 64 is a console which tends to divide gamers. Launching back in 96 and 97 in different regions, the gaming industry switched for the most part from the tried and true 2D sprites to these new flashy 3D polygons. And Nintendo didn't always handle things the best. With its wider array of games, thanks to its disc-based technology, Sony's PlayStation put up one heck of a fight. And in the meantime, Nintendo doubled down on its cartridge-based hardware and its kitty colored controllers that were arguably out of step with its more maturing gaming audience. But for many gamers, the Nintendo 64 evokes some of our warmest, strongest gaming memories. It was while brandishing this console's three-pronged pad that many of us took our first steps into a three-dimensional Mushroom Kingdom or Hyrule. And the unrivaled excitement excitement of four-player split-screen Mario Kart or GoldenEye sticks in our mind like few other multiplayer experiences. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you the 21 best games the Nintendo 64 has to offer. Now the twist, what makes our list special, is that it's voted on entirely by our community. Over on NintendoLife.com, we asked you to chime in and rank your favorite N64 games. Which ones you think are the best of the best? And we gotta say, we're definitely surprised, but you still came up with quite the selection. Now this list won't be in any particular order, partially just to make this more of a celebration of the N64 than an all-out war in the comments. And hopefully if someone at Nintendo is watching, they can consider this a giant wish list for an N64 classic, if they ever decide to produce one. And if they can make a brand new Game & Watch in the year 2020, we're sure it's only a matter of time. After nearly two decades, Paper Mario might not look as sharp as we all remember, but it still holds up in many ways. While originally being developed as a sequel to Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo, it still shares many similarities with The Legend of the Seven Stars, including its combat and humor. Its turn-based combat does a great job at keeping the player engaged with the whole timing attack system that requires you to hit the A button in time with your attacks, rather than just inputting your commands and watching your party fight like normal. And with a lovable cast of supporting characters like Goomba Ario, Goombario, and Bombette, Bombet. Nah. Regardless, you don't have to worry about Mario hogging the spotlight like in other entries in the series. Paper Mario on N64 is a great example of what makes the series so spectacular, and this is an absolutely excellent starting point to the series. So if you consider yourself a fan of the Paper Mario series, or even just RPGs in general, you should definitely check this one out. Super Smash Bros. on N64 may be a bit more wonky and unrefined in comparison to its Smash siblings, but it's still an absolute hoot when you toss some friends in the mix. There's a certain charm to its toy box aesthetic that's been sort of lost in later entries and makes it still worth revisiting today. A lack of any real collectible trophies and goodies to unlock doesn't really give the game as much replay value. But the addition of Break the Targets and the other minigames do add to its runtime if you choose to tackle them with every character. And I suppose you could consider unlocking the four secret characters as extra things to do as well, but that's just a given. And on that note, now I finally understand why I never unlocked Ness as a kid. Bearing in mind how carefully Nintendo began handling its characters and their image after the misfire that was the Super Mario Bros. movie, and of course the Philips CDI games in the early 90s, it's remarkable that the original Super Smash Bros. and its inner franchise fighting got off the drawing board at HAL Laboratories in the first place. Fortunately, Masahiro Sakurai's crossover brawler was given the green light, and would grow over the years to become one of the world's biggest fighting games that we all know and love today. Many gamers in the West wouldn't be able to get their hands on the over-the-top arcade shooter Sin and Punishment until it came to the Wii Virtual Console back in 2007, but that didn't hurt its popularity one bit. Over time, it became known as a cult classic, partially thanks to the developer Treasure's history with games like Ikaruga and Gunstar Heroes, and due to the fact that it had been locked away in Japan all those years. Sin and Punishment is an on-rails third-person shooter, akin somewhat to the gameplay of Kid Icarus Uprising. You'll slash and blast your way through a number of levels in its short but savory Evangelion-esque campaign. The game also features a full English voice cast, which surprised me back in the day when I first played it. I'm still curious to this day why Sin and Punishment never came stateside originally, but I'm happy we can still play it now through the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console, and hopefully someday on the Switch. 
There really is nothing else like it on the system, and if you enjoy a slice of Japan every now and again, you have to check this out. Even though Diddy Kong Racing released the same year as Mario Kart 64, it still did plenty to stand apart and earn itself a spot on this list. Its single player campaign was a full on adventure with an open world to explore, much like Crash Bandicoot did on the PlayStation a few years later. The addition of planes and hovercraft vehicles added much larger, more complex circuits to race around, and added a nice variety if you ever needed a break from the carts. The game also provided the console debuts of both Banjo and Conker, and the next time we saw Conker on the system, well, he wouldn't be the same old squirrel we knew him as now, would he? If you were a kid in the early 2000s and somehow managed to convince your grandmother you had no idea why this game with a cute score holding a glass of apple juice on the cover was rated M, and that she should let you rent it from your local Hollywood video anyways, well then props to you but also shame on you, because realistically this is a game that no child should get their hands on. What originally started off as a more cutesy, kid-friendly 3D platformer, Conker's Bad Fur Day eventually took a different approach to stand out from the pack of other platformers, and became the foul-mouthed, blood-filled comedy most of us know and love today. Except for my grandpa. He really didn't appreciate walking in and seeing me bounce on a flower as, um, well, eh, you, you know. The story follows Conker. Oh, um, uh, what do you want? a squirrel who's just had another rough night at the pub and gets a little lost on his way home, and thus his adventure begins. You'll meet a number of characters who will either befriend Conker or just try to take him down, likely due to something stupid he said. And these characters are really what make the package such a hoot. From the bumblebee and his loving sunflower to a giant pool of poo, the cast of characters is rich, to say the least. A lot of the humor is really set in the 90s as well, as it's baked with movie parodies and cultural references. But even if some of the jokes don't land as well as they may have back then, Conker's delivery is sure to still put a smile on your face. Conker's Bad Fur Day is one of those games we're surprised to ever got greenlit on a Nintendo platform, but boy are we glad it did. If we were to ask anyone to make a list of their favorite N64 games... Xeon, that line is completely worthless. Oh. Yeah. Most people would be likely to include GoldenEye 007. It quite possibly may be the best movie tie-in ever made, so much so that many people may first think of the video game if anyone were to ever bring up the word GoldenEye. Rare's FPS was the Call of Duty and Halo of its time. Not only did it pave the way for future generations, it also gave the N64 a more adult experience that it felt like it was missing at the time. At a time when the PlayStation was the cool kid's machine, GoldenEye 007 provided some real ammo in the console wars, and its four-player deathmatches led to some of the best multiplayer memories some of us have for any system. Then a few years later came the essential spiritual successor to GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. A completely original FPS from Rare that starred the well-loved secret agent Joanna Dark. Perfect Dark really stretched the N64 hardware by taking full advantage of the expansion pack, and was arguably the most ambitious game on the console, featuring a full campaign with new gadgets and a beefy multiplayer mode that included bots. There was just a lot to love here. James Bond was never going to be an easy act to follow, but Joanna Dark's noirish sci-fi was as good a follow-up as you could hope to have, and two decades later, it's still stands as a remarkable achievement. It's hard to discuss the N64 and not mention Super Mario 64. Even if you somehow didn't grow up with it, like me, you've still probably played it or heard of its wonders by now, and for good reason. Miyamoto's team managed to create the unthinkable, a jolly adventure full of stars and secrets to discover, all backed by a slick control scheme and impressive camera that all came at a time when no one really knew what a 3D platformer could be like. Super Mario 64 truly is a landmark in gaming, a gem that withstands the test of time that is still being compared to this very day, and with its inclusion in in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection on Switch, you really have no excuse to not dive back into this game or give it a try for your very first time, as long as you can still get your hands on a copy by the time you actually watch this video. Yeah. 
Wars continue to wage online over whether F-Zero X or its successor on GameCube is the superior white knuckle futuristic racer. But one thing we can at least all agree on is that they're both essential titles for their respective platforms. The 64-bit entry is metal, pure simple guitar screeching, all out metal. Pulling off a tight turn and risking your last remaining energy on a boost towards the finish line is extremely rewarding when you can pull it off. At this speed on the dizzying tracks, even the tiniest prod on the analog stick or the slightest bump of the triggers matters. And the original N64 controller offers peak precision for micro adjustments, which make the difference between gracefully sweeping through a corner or catching said corner head on. Considering it's been over 15 years since we've seen Captain Falcon helm his own game, we feel the spiritual successor Fast RMX proves that it's worth Nintendo revisiting the series sooner or later. And even if for some reason he never returns, at least we'll always have this this gem on N64. Rareware put out several platformers on N64, each with their own pros and cons, but nothing is as magical as the original Banjo-Kazooie. There's something about the precise platforming and fairy tale formula that makes this jiggy an important piece of the N64 puzzle. It's big, but not too big. Sweet, but not really sticky. Challenging, but rarely unfair. From the eccentric cast of critters you meet and defeat, to Mumbo Jumbo's unique and oftentimes hilarious transformations, the overall game adorable animation, tight controls, and rude but not crude storytelling. The tale of Banjo-Kazooie has absolutely stolen our hearts, and once you get your hands on their adventure, you'll fully understand why their inclusion in Smash meant so much to a lot of us. Banjo-Kazooie is hands down one of the very best games the Nintendo 64 has to offer. And if you disagree, well, you probably haven't even played the game, have you? <laughs> Following the James Cameron philosophy, Banjo-Tooie takes a more is more approach with larger worlds, a host of mini games, an expanded moveset, which now includes new first person sections, Mumbo Jumbo as a playable character, and a multiplayer mode. It's a big chewy sequel, although it arguably flirts with the excess that made Donkey Kong 64 feel grindy at times. However, it's still filled to the absolute brim with the series trademark brand of cheeky fairy tale wonder, and fans will still find a lot to love here. The N64 version of the PlayStation Classic survival horror title, Resident Evil 2, is a technically incredible port in its own right. This is, in a sense, where the modern series as we know it began. It upped the ante of the terrifying yet cheesy B-movie feel of the first game and established the quality look and feel that the series embraces to this day. While the tank controls can be a bit of a pain to go back to, it almost intensifies the frights until you fully come to grips with them. Resident Evil 2 on N64 is another game that almost shouldn't exist. But the team at Angel Studios did a fantastic job cramming every bit of Resident Evil 2 onto a cartridge, and it's still a fantastic way to play the game today. At the time of its release, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time felt familiar to Zelda fans with its world, characters, and stylings. But just like Super Mario 64, it was simultaneously fresh with its brand new 3D third-person gameplay. And for those of us who grew up in the era of the N64, this would be the title that cemented us as Zelda fans for the rest of our lives. Ocarina of Time made a nearly flawless jump to the 64-bit era. It set the template for not only every subsequent Zelda title, but also the majority of action-adventure games from the past two decades. Going back nowadays, Hyrule Field feels more like an actual field than the vast kingdom of Hyrule we remembered it as, especially in comparison to the behemoth that is Breath of the Wild. But the pure magic of the game still shines through, so whether you have memories of fetching a princess from the depths of a giant whale, have pulled the sacred sword from its stone in the past, or are venturing out in the lands of Hyrule for your first time. Ocarina of Time can still be as enchanting of an experience today as it was back then. The constant pressure of the three-day cycle may have put off some players, but that cycle is also key to the unique way The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask focuses on its cast of uncanny characters and soaks the adventure in melancholy and madness. 
it adds a sense of urgency and suspense to completing a dungeon, or to make sure you kept your promise to meet up with someone like Anju and Keifi on time. And we finally understood what it felt like to walk a day in the life of a Deku, Zora, and Goron thanks to the transformation masks. And plenty more masks helped us understand the struggle and grief the rest of the world was facing, all thanks to the troublesome Skull Kid and his giant pet boulder. Eiji Aonuma and his team were given a year to develop a new title, and by reusing some old assets from Ocarina of Time, we were given Termina, a mysterious dreamscape full of familiar faces from Link's past, along with a slew of new ones to help keep things fresh. Now we could sit and argue about the true meaning of its plot devices till the sky comes falling down, but one thing we can probably all agree on is that there's no denying the fact that Majora's Mask is one of the most unique and impressive titles on this list. Much like every sport in video game form, the history of wrestling games is littered with plenty of lows, a mass of middling efforts, and a handful of highs. WWF No Mercy is very much as good as it gets. In fact, with depth and heft that's often missing from wrestling games two decades on, it's a legitimate contender for the greatest wrestling game ever made. For a system with a minor number of one-on-one -on -one combat titles, WWF No Mercy is an extremely large feather in the console's cap, one that fans are still reminiscing over 20 years later. Factor V's first foray into the cockpit of a rebel fighter in Star Wars Rogue Squadron gave N64 owners some serious fodder to use in playground arguments about which consoles had the best games. With the expansion pack plugged in, this was a real looker for the time, and the console's thin analog stick suited its arcadey flight mechanics perfectly. With plenty of audio dialogue and all the customary sound effects, this was not only a great game, but an excellent experience for Star Wars fans unlike anything else for its time. Its GameCube sequel really boosted the visuals, but the base mechanics in the N64 original still feel fantastic, so if you're looking for a galactic dose of quality flyboy action, Rogue Squadron is standing by. In a way, Mario Party was starting to become the Madden of Nintendo consoles. Hudson was developing a new title for Nintendo every year, and while the last entry on the console, Mario Party 3, saw a little change in the formula, as long as the minigames were fresh and fun and didn't cause your palms to blister, what was there to complain about? Thankfully, by this point, most of the kinks of the series had been worked out, and Mario Party 3 is still a great game to play with a couple friends. This entry does include a single player campaign as well, but but we really wouldn't recommend anyone subject themselves to a night of CPU Mario Party. Are you guys sure you've played this before? And if you can't seem to get your hands on that, Mario Party 2 will do quite nicely as well. What makes the second entry a bit more special is the fact that your characters each wear different costumes based on the theme of the board you choose. You'll get to dress up as Wild West cowboys and cowgirls, pirates, and even astronauts. In a way, it adds to the overall party feel of the series just a bit more. And we honestly wouldn't mind seeing Nintendo return to this format again in the future. Tony Hawk, for the most part, is thought of as a PlayStation franchise, especially in the early days. But the Birdman got a bunch of N64 ports of his games, including one of the very best, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Edge of Reality's port may have come a year after the PlayStation version, but it still is an extremely solid way to hop back on the board. Except for in the audio department. Thanks to the restrictions of the cartridge format, which we sadly still suffer from in different ways now on Switch. If you've got an N64 laying around and you're itching to play some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, consider this still a worthy option. Going by the name Lilat Wars in Europe, Star Fox 64 released back in 97 and came bundled with the Rumble Pack, which was many gamers' introduction to force feedback on consoles. This also meant it came in a big oversized box, much like Pokemon Stadium did. And when your childlike hands picked up a game like that off the shelf, you knew that game meant business. Star Fox 64 was a huge production for Nintendo, with its dynamic dogfighting, multiplayer battles, fully voiced dialogue, and epic score. Anyone who played was in for one heck of a ride. And while its campaign can be wrapped up pretty quickly, its branching paths gave us more reason to hop back in the seat of Fox's favorite R-Wing again and again.
The characters might not have been truly 3D rendered models, but Mario Kart 64's huge circuits showed off the hardware and added inclines, items, and obstacles, and a four-player multiplayer mode. Each iteration of the Mario Kart series adds a little something new, but following on from the flat circuits of Super Mario Kart, there's really nothing quite like that first jump to 3D. 9 out of 10 times, if you have anyone over at your place and you happen to mention that you have an N64, you're likely to get the good old, hey, do you have Mario Kart? It's the kind of game that almost anyone can pick up and play, and probably has at some point in their life. It's simple, straight to the point, and more barrels of fun than this game ever was. Mario Kart 64 is a game every N64 owner should have in their library. Period. And there you have it, the very best games the Nintendo 64 has to offer. As with any list, there's going to be some divisive inclusions and omissions. But the best part of our fan voted lists is that they continue to evolve as more user scores are submitted to the Nintendo Life database. You just head over to nintendolife.com, make an account if you don't already have one, and get on to ranking those games. And be sure to spread the word of your favorite N64 titles in the comments down below as well. Rocket Robot on Wheels may have been forgotten this time, but don't worry, Rocket, your time will come. You and your singular wheel, you'll be back. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and smash that subscribe button in the third dimension. But don't actually do any real damage though, please. Yep, uh-huh. It's our lawyers. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Oh.